This is the first of a kind Revolution Very Light Rail Vehicle, uh, which is a 22 an associated ton uh, rail car uh, with carbon fibre body shell. It's first of a kind, uh, very lightweight in, in comparison to, uh, to more traditional uh, DMUs. The materials that we've used, composites uh, throughout the top side of the, of the body shell, uh, make it uh, obviously lighter. The ease of deployment, um, because the speed of manufacture and assembly of the parts is inside of two years, and the mobilisation timeframes also make it uh, more readily able to, to, to be deployed. We set out to design a vehicle that was both lightweight and robust, for um, principally for travelling on tracks which could be reopened or restored, but tracks which uh, have a condition which is probably not up to uh, uh, full standard, but are nonetheless capable of taking passenger traffic. So what we've built is uh, a very lightweight vehicle on a very substantial and well-proven bogey. Uh, as part of the uh, DFT's Restoring Your Railway uh, initiative, there are a number of lines that we believe Revolution suits um, and because of the cost-effective nature of the actual product, the business cases that are out there all of a sudden become more viable, therefore that will increase uh, the, the, the viability of commuter traffic, therefore increasing connectivity throughout rural England. We've gone for a simple look, cost-effective look, but also the customer experience needs to be one of comfort and one of modern times. Um, the connectivity again in terms of digital connectivity is all within the train uh, and it just needs to be a very pleasant environment to have a short commuter run. It was attractive to us as a, a, a rolling stock owner uh, because it complements our existing heavy rail portfolio and it will assist, we hope, in growing rail patronage and thereby underpinning the demand for our heavy rail vehicles too. And the final key element that attracted us to it was the, the balance of innovation in terms of the novel vehicle structure, the implementation of the hybrid powertrain technology uh, and use of proven rail systems where appropriate. In powering the vehicle, we're really setting out to stay at the forefront of uh, power technology. So this version is uh, developed with a Euro 6 hybrid diesel. Uh, the diesel engine in this case is uh, uh, turning at its optimum uh, efficiency. Uh, very soon we'll have a battery version uh, and the next launch vehicles could well be battery vehicle. Um, and into the future, certainly hydrogen IC and hydrogen fuel cell uh, opportunities are something we're looking at and keeping in mind. So the seating um, wanted to be lightweight again to match the rest of the train. So we looked at various technologies in that. Um, and we've got an airline style seating developed by Transcal. And speaking to Transcal, they've got various applications that we can do to make the interior different um, for different layouts and whatever is required. And the reason why we're marketing now is to see what people want out there. Uh, this is the first iteration of what that will be. So we designed the vehicle to be entirely modular and there's a number of reasons why we want to do that. Uh, one is for manufacturability, it's very easy to manufacture our vehicle with the minimum facilities. Uh, second, in terms of maintenance, it's very easy to maintain the vehicle, parts uh, can be taken off, for instance the power packs can be removed in 20 minutes um, and replaced perhaps line side with another power pack. But more particularly for future growth potential and technology, we can replace the existing power packs with completely new forms of technology, uh, build those into our modular software system and then we're ready to uh, take passengers again. So it's a very good upgradable, modular, uh, buildable vehicle. It's, it's really what we've achieved and we're, we're very proud of having done that. Initially, segregated branch lines running into bay platforms is a logical first step for them. The whole programme has been about challenge and with RSSB and with support from the ORR, we are starting to look at can the use of revolution go beyond that onto lines, for example, where there's, there's relatively infrequent freight and other passenger traffic and where, where a, a, a revolution operated service could coexist. And that's probably going to require a mix of technology because although it isn't fitted to the demonstrator, it can have in-cab signalling and, and other equipment. Uh, 
operating procedures and timetabling. In this early phase, we've had a substantial input from, from our SSB. They have really encouraged us to challenge the norms and be ambitious with this and we'll continue that dialogue going forward and we're already engaging with a wide range of stakeholders to explore how the, the, uh, the, the revolution vehicle could fit into their operational desires and fulfil their transport needs. It is challenging the existing standards in some way uh, and, and looking at yes standards that are out there, how we can develop it further for, for the future for us, yes. As well as in the UK we are seeing uh, interest from um, non-UK stakeholders too uh, and it, it'll be interesting to see how that develops uh, as, as the programme goes forward. Again having the, the demonstrator available so that we can show, show some people something tangible operating on a real railway line is very important to us uh, and it imparts confidence.